sorry energy conservation act 2001 that is our point of discussion today with the background of high energy saving potential reduce environmental emission through energy saving and to optimize gap between supply and demand the government of india has enacted energy conservation act 2001 the act provides much needed legal framework and institutional arrangement for energy efficiency drive under the provision of the act bureau of energy efficiency has been established b is responsible for implementing different energy efficiency programs and activities the energy conservation act 2001 the specific energy consumption standards for notified it specify energy consumption standards for notified equipment some equipments are there that is called notified equipments that are energy intensive equipments and it specify the standards for notified equipments it instructs mandatory display of level on notified instruments or appliances uh, such as refrigerator or ac we often find star rating annual energy consumption it also prohibited prohibit uh, manufacturing of instruments or appliances that are not conforming the standards energy consumption standards standards and you can uh, import import it also where, where uh, if it is not conforming the particular energy consumption standards it notify energy intensive industries other establishments and commercial buildings as designated consumers under the provision of this act some sectors some segments have been identified as energy intensive and named as designated consumers railway is one of the one of them indian railway it prescribes energy consumption norms and standards for designated consumers it prescribes energy conservation building codes india has already launched energy conservation building code in india any commercial building having more than 100 kilowatt connected load or 110 kva uh, contract demand must comply with energy conservation building code or ecbc code for india standards and leveling leveling is important for the designated uh, stand uh, equipments and um, products uh, standards and leveling has been identified as a key activity for energy efficiency improvement it in shows only energy efficient equipment and appliances would be made available to the consumers it directs minimum energy consumption and performance standards for notified equipment and appliances it provides manufacturing of the equipments that are not conforming with these standards leveling is mandatory for notified equipments and appliances for information of energy consumption to the consumers designated consumers under the provision of ec act energy conservation act some uh, companies some sectors have been industries have been identified as designated cons consumers actually they consume much energy compared to other one and they have sufficient uh, uh, capacity to improve energy efficiency the act provides list of designated consumers which got covered basically energy intensive industries designated consumers are railway indian railway is one of the designated consumers port trust transport sectors power stations transmission and distribution companies commercial buildings and establishments the designated consumer to get an energy audit audited uh, energy sorry energy audit conducted by an energy accredited energy auditor um, energy managers with prescribed qualification are required to be appointed under b one examination uh, is there that is called a, uh, uh, examination for energy auditor and energy manager four papers are there 
if you can uh, clear four papers then you will be certified as accredited energy auditor and if you clear three papers then you will be getting a certificate of energy manager energy conservation building code ecbc code in india ecbc code has already been enacted ecbc code specifies any building any building in india intended for commercial use having 100 kilowatt connected load or demand contract demand of 110 kva and it is intended for commercial use must comply with the ecbc or energy conservation building code energy audit of specific designated commercial building consumers would also be prescribed building materials building materials with optical and thermal properties are also mentioned in uh, ecbc guide in accordance with national building code Bureau of Energy Efficiency. The mission of the Bureau of Energy Efficiency is to provide leadership in energy efficiency in sectors or sectors of economy in India. The primary objective is to reduce energy intensity. Primary objective is to minimize, reduce energy intensity in the Indian economy. Governing Council of B is constructed with 26 members. The council is headed by Union Ministry of Power. The Director General of the Bureau shall be the ex officio member secretary of the council. The B will be initially supported by Central Government of in Central Government of India by the way of grant through budget and gradually it becomes self sufficient. B will also use the Central Energy Conservation Fund and other funds to in order to promote energy efficiency investment. Demand side management earlier two managements are there one is supply side management and another is demand side management our uh, demand is ever increasing but our supply is not increasing as the demand is increasing so there is gap between supply and demand so taking care of supply side is very difficult because it is very cost intensive and demand side management is one of the best option to minimize energy consumption and improve energy efficiency as well as reducing greenhouse gas effect greenhouse gas emission so demand side management has a very good impact on our energy system it ensures continuous development in energy efficiency activities in recent past demand side management has gained unprecedented import importance and has become an integral part of almost all the central and state emission state missions on promotion of energy efficiency demand side management interaction uh, interventions have helped utilities not only to reduce the peak electricity demand and but also to def defer high investments in generation transmission and distribution network small and medium enterprise SME actually micro small and medium enterprise that is that is called MSMEs account for large part in world's consumption of resources the MSME the MSME sectors occupies a position of prominence in Indian economy contributing to more than 45 percent of the industrial output comes from MSME sector and 40% of India's export is coming from MSME se sector but there is some problems the lack of technology latest technology in this sector making a uh, sector vulnerable to energy making it vulnerable to energy security and competitiveness in global market in 2007 to recognize the importance of MSME in promoting energy efficiency national program on energy efficiency and technology upgradation of msmes was flagged off by bureau of indian uh, bureau of energy efficiency small uh, lack of access to finance for msme is one of the major problem for implementing energy conservation measures and energy efficient technologies be has implemented 21 pilot projects energy efficiency technologies 
for financial assistance across the sector. The energy saving potential is immense in this sector, which BE intends to unlock. But main challenge is poor documentation, lacking of awareness and motivation. With the collective efforts of BE standards, BE stand, uh, BE uh, collective efforts of BE towards improving the energy performance, the current state of awareness, perceptions, and responsiveness towards energy efficiency programs for these segments has become the mainstream across the country. Micro, small and medium enterprise accounts for large part of world's consumption of resources. Sorry, I have already mentioned this. Next is Budget Lamp Jojona. We all know that CFL are the great electricity saver as compared to incandescent lamp and consumes lot less energy and give the same output and now it is LED gives more much more efficient it is much more efficient and consume less much less energy compared to CFL but Indian people do not use this efficient technologies because of its high cost to tackle this problem BE has launched a prop a scheme called budget lamp yojana to distribute quality quality long life cfls in exchange of an incandescent lamp at rupees 15 to re residential consumers be has launched this scheme as part of their cdm clean development mechanism is a part of um, kyoto protocol uh, program implementation the successful implementation of the scheme will result in reduction greenhouse gas from power plant. B has selected some suppliers. Their suppliers are called uh, investor in CDMs, clean development mechanism, who will supply CFLs at cheaper cost in, re in replacement of incandescent lamps. The suppliers in return will get several certified certified emission emission reduction CER CER credits. The electricity distribution companies, also called DISCOM, will partner with any of these selected suppliers to provide CFLs to, dis con uh, to dis uh, discounted price to the consumers. Participation in this scheme is completely voluntary. As part of the scheme, a 60 watt incandescent lamp can be replaced with 11 to 15 watt CFL and 100 watt will be replaced with 18 to 23 watt and maximum four bulbs can be replaced per household. Electricity Act 2003. The government enacted, government of India enacted Electricity Act 2003, which seeks to bring about a qualitative transformation within the electricity sector. It replaces three existing norms, legislations, namely Indian Electricity Act 1910 the Electricity Supply Act 1948 and the Electricity Regulatory Commissions Act 1998. All three have been replaced with one that is called Electricity Act 2003. The objective of the Act are to consolidate the laws relating to generation, transmission, distribution, trading and use of electricity. Aims of the Acts are taking measures to develop of electricity industry and promoting competition protecting interest of consumers and supply of electricity to all areas rationalization of electricity tariff tariff ensuring transparent policies regarding subsidies promotion of efficient and environmentally beneficial policies establishment of appellate tribunal some features of Electricity Act. Lot of features are there in Electricity Act 2003. Some of them are mentioned here. The central government to prepare a national electricity policy in construct consultation with state boards, gov state governments. It is mentioned in section three. Thus to complete the rural electrification, it has been mentioned in section four, five, and six. Transmission utility at the central as well as 
state level to be a government company with responsibility for planned and coordinated development of transmission network section 38 and 39 provision for private licenses it has been mentioned in section 14 of electricity act features of electricity act is continuing the state electricity regulatory commission is a mandatory it has been mentioned in section 82 provision for payment of subsidy through budget section 65 provision for recognition of continuing continuance of state electricity boards it is section 131 and 172 an appellate tribunal to hear appeal against the decision of crc and acrc section 111 provision relating to theft of electricity it has also been included in electricity act provisions safeguarding consumer interest section 57 and ombudsman scheme section 42 for consumers for consumers for general for uh, grievance redressal integrated energy policy india's integrated energy policy is a comprehensive policy on energy which is drafted to explore alternative technologies that would increase energy efficiency and meet requirement for energy services the planning commission of india now it is niti ayog estimated that the country will need to increase its primary energy supply by 3 to 4 times and electricity generation capacity by 5 to 6 times compared to 2003 4 level if it is to meet energy need for needs for all its citizens by 20 32 and the and to maintain 8% gdp growth rate recommendations of expert committee some recommendations are there the report the rep, the report of the expert committee appointed by the planning commission to improve energy efficiency itself contains the following recommendations coal will remain the primary energy source until 2031 32 so coal is the primary source of energy in india as we have huge reserve of coal and coal will last more than 100 years at present rate of conduction, consumption rationalize fuel price through integrated energy policy improve energy efficiency reduce energy intensity augment fossil fuel reserves by increasing exploration for coal oil and natural gas augment the role of hydro and nuclear power in india push the increased renewable energy in energy mix aims and objective of integrated energy policy provide it provides appropriate fiscal policies to make to take care the externalities that is the difficulties externalities problems independent regular uh, regulations to address anti competitive market behavior tax and regulatory structures should provide a legal a level playing field for all sectors of sectors and all players taxes should be neutral except except cases specially specifically intended to counter externalities such as environmental costs transparent and targeted subsidies promoting energy efficiency by enforcing standards effectively promote competitive energy markets in order to promote energy efficiency and investment in energy sectors correct pricing of energy in order to send the right signals to produ- producers and customers incentives for renewable energy production to be linked to output and not just to capacity addition Thanks.